Welcome to the next lesson, Nailing Your Numbers, which is all about scaling your business. And in this lesson, we're gonna cover the three business objectives that you can choose from for your new business. Determining your financial goals. We'll go over a sample timeline for this business so you know what to expect over the next six months. We'll talk about how to make more money faster, how much you're willing to invest in both time and money. And lastly, we're gonna to commit to your investment and your success. Now let's go over the three different business objectives you can have for your new business. There's cash flow, cash out, or a combination of the two. And the goals will be different for each one of these. The goal of a cash flow business is to build a cash machine that you can live off of very comfortably for the rest of your life. For cash out, the goal is to build a highly valued business that you can sell and then make a cash windfall off of. And of course, combination is to build a cash machine, but one with potential to sell should you choose to do so. Now, all three of these have one thing in common in order to build the business. They all involve ramping up your sales at the beginning in order to increase how quickly you can build profits and to grow the business. After that, though, things vary slightly. For a cash flow business, you'll want to focus on a good profit margin because your profit margin is basically the salary that you'll be making a living off of. In order to do that, you will need to reinvest part or as much of your profits as you possibly can. Also, you will be able to take some profits out but the goal here is to keep ramping up your profits to grow your income. Now for a cash out business, your initial goal after ramping up sales will be to quickly grow your product catalog because that is the easiest and fastest way to grow the value of your company. In order to do that, you'll wanna reinvest all of your profits. And then your initial focus will be on sales volume and not so much on profits, but eventually you will need to focus on profits because no one wants to buy a company that is not profitable. And of course, for a combination, um, it's really just basically a blending of these two. You'll want to slowly grow your product catalog. You'll want to reinvest most, but not all of the profits. And then the goal here is to grow both sales and profits to give you the most flexibility. Now, here's a sample business timeline for a typical Amazon physical products business just starting off. This, of course, will vary greatly and really depends a lot on when you get your first product and inventory in. But in month one, the goal is to order the inventory, and then hopefully in month two, your inventory arrives and you're able to launch your product. In month three, your sales should start kicking in using the various marketing and launch methods we'll be teaching you. And then in month four, based upon how well your sales are going and doing some projections into the future, that's when you should be reordering your inventory. Then in month five, your new inventory arrives, and then in month six, you really start scaling. Now, this entire process can be repeated for your first product until you're able to scale it up to where you want to go, or it can be repeated for any additional products that you launch. Now, in order to achieve success for your business, you need to set goals, and one of those goals should be your financial goal. But what's realistic? How do you know what to set for a financial goal? Well, let's start by looking at some real examples. One member started out the business, and a year and a half later, they sold it for $2 million. Another member started the business, and then within nine months, they produced $1 million in sales. Another member started out the business and was able to replace their six-figure income and then quit their job within 12 months. And yet another member started their business, and three years later, they have a business generating $12 million a year in sales. Now, these don't really help because it's so hard to determine from these and other people's experiences what's realistic for you. In order to do that, we need to look at what you want to get out of this business. But before we can determine what your financial goal is, we have to first figure out what your real goal is for building this business. Do you want to replace income from a job that you have right now so you can quit that job? Maybe you're miserable in that job. You just want to quit it as quickly as possible. Or are you looking to build up a big business so that you can have a huge cash windfall when you finally sell it? Or maybe you want to build a business that's a true asset that you can pass down to your children. And if any of your goals involved having more free time, what is it you want to do with your free time? Will you still need to have a lot of money so you can travel in style and luxury? Or are you just looking to spend some more free time with the family? So here's what I want you to do right now. Pause the video and then write down what your real goal is without any dollars attached to it. Here's a few examples. My goal is to be able to quit my job within 12 months and still have plenty of money to travel. Or my goal is to be able to keep my same standard of living but have the ability to go camping with my family every single weekend. Do that and then come back to this lesson. All right, now, before we can come up with that financial goal is, we also have to know how to calculate profits. And net profits are basically total revenue minus the cost of goods sold 
minus any other business expenses. Now I'll go over what those mean. Total revenue is what Amazon pays you after they take out all of their fees. The cost of goods sold is an accounting and manufacturing term, and that's basically your product costs, so what you pay the manufacturer, plus any shipping costs. And these shipping costs include all importing costs, the shipping part of that, plus customs, duties, and taxes, and then also shipping the product to Amazon. And any other business expenses might be any type of advertising you do, uh, hosting a website, or maybe if you pay for a uh, email service. Now, a good profit should be anywhere between 25 and 40% for this business. As an example, if you're able to generate $100,000 a month in sales, that would result in $25 to $40,000 a month in profit. So now that we know what your real goal is, and we know how to calculate profit, it's time to choose your personal financial goal. And since profit is important regardless of your business objective, whether you're creating a cash flow business to live off of, whether you're creating a business that you can sell and cash out on or a combination of both, you still need to make a profit. So that is the best calculation to use when determining your financial goal. So let's set a profit goal for your business right now. I want you to pause the video after these instructions. Choose a monthly profit goal, choose a time frame to achieve it, and then write it down like this. My business will be producing a profit of so many dollars per month by this date. I want you to do that and then come back to this lesson. Now, no matter what date you just wrote down, whether it's three months, six months, or a year from now, everyone would like to succeed sooner. So let's talk about a few ways to help make that happen. The first way, of course, is to simply order more inventory initially. That way you'll never run out and you also have more inventory to work with when trying to ramp up your sales. Now this is a risk, but it should be a calculated risk as long as you follow our guidance and training when doing your product selection. Another thing to do is to choose a product that's lighter and smaller, therefore it can be shipped by air. That'll get your product to you much quicker and you'll be able to start selling sooner. You can also choose a product that can be sourced right from inside your own country. Again, it should arrive to you quicker and then the shipping cost should be less as well. However, this does greatly limit your options as far as which products you can choose from. And lastly, you could choose a product that has a higher profit margin. And typically, products that are at the very high end of the bands that we're gonna teach you offer a much higher dollar profit margin and therefore can get you succeeding much sooner. However, those products will cost more money for your initial inventory purchase. Now, speaking of inventory, inventory is the number one way that you can succeed sooner. So let's talk a little bit more about that. One thing to keep in mind is that inventory is not an expense, so don't think of it that way. Inventory is actually an asset for your business. And every time that you're buying inventory, you're actually investing money into your business that you can get back out of your business as you sell your products. Now, almost everyone runs out of inventory initially. This is totally okay. If it happens to you, don't worry about it. It's actually a sign that you have a good product. However, every day that you're out of stock is a day of lost sales. So anything we can do, and typically that's by simply having more inventory, anything we can do to keep that from happening means the faster that you will succeed. Now, other than inventory, there are other ways to succeed faster as well. One is to spend more money on marketing and advertising. Some call this buying your way to the top of Amazon search rankings. Uh, another way is to price your product initially much more competitively than you want to, so you focus more on sales and not so much on profit. You could also pay for professional product images and videos, and that way that would increase the conversion rates of your product detail page. Or you could spend more money branding and packaging your product better than anyone else out there. Each of these will help you succeed much faster than you normally would, uh, but there is a cost for each one of them as well. Earlier in this lesson, we talked about how the amount of time and the level of effort you're able to put in this business will affect how quickly you're able to succeed. So now let's talk about how your financial investment will do the same. Let's imagine we have three groups. One will be the slow and steady, then the fast starters, and then the rapid ramp ups. And the main difference will be what they can invest in this business initially. So let's say that the first group can invest anywhere from $500 up to 3,500 then 3,500 up to 10,000, and then for the rapid ramp ups, it's really 10, 20,000 or beyond. Now here's what it looks like. So for the slow and steady, they'll still be able to get a few samples, plenty for what they need to do. They'll be able to get the minimum inventory they need in order to launch their product and have a basic product launch. They'll have some basic branding. They'll have simple yet effective packaging, and they'll still have a very good social media presence because that doesn't take any amount of money at all. Now for the fast starters, they'll of course be able to get more samples, They'll have ample inventory to do a full good product launch. They'll have professional looking branding, they'll have professional looking packaging, and then they should be able to come up with a brand website in addition to their social media website. 
And of course, for the rapid ramp ups, they'll have lots of samples, lots of inventory, be able to do a big product launch or multiple product launches, professional branding and packaging, and they'll be able to even maybe partner up with some social media pros to really boost their product's launch. Now, no matter what group you fall into, do not fall into this trap. Your success is not dependent solely upon your financial investment. As a matter of fact, the most successful people we have seen in ASM started out in the slow and steady group. It doesn't do any good to be envious of someone because they have more to put into this financially. Instead, your sole focus should be on achieving your own personal goal, which is completely independent upon everyone else. So how much are you willing to invest in your business? Well, remember, we've had people invest as little as $500 and have still built very successful businesses. Your investment does matter, but it is only one factor in your success. And while risk equals reward, it's important to take calculated risks, not reckless ones. You should only do what you're capable of and what you're comfortable with in order to meet your own goals. So let's do this right now. Write down how much you're willing to invest to build your business. So now that we talked about your financial investment, let's go back and talk even more in depth about your time investment because time is an investment and will greatly affect how quickly you succeed. You see, at first, you will have lots of downtime. You'll be waiting for samples to arrive. You'll be waiting for your inventory to arrive. You might be waiting for Amazon to check your product in and make it live on their site. But once your business takes off, trust me, you will never have nothing to do. There's all kinds of things you can do when you have the time to do them. They'll be researching additional products, creating content for all types of things like social media sites, emails, your website, launching additional marketing strategies, analyzing your data, which can take a lot of time, such as your advertising return on the investment, the conversion rates of your pages, and then all kinds of product listing testing and improvements to it. Now let's try to take a look at this time investment in a more visual way. Uh, let's consider that we have some part-time people, some people that are focused on the business, and then those that are all in. And they'll pretty much just uh, vary by how much time they put into it. Part-time will say we'll go one hour a day on average, They'll still be executing all the necessary ASM training. They'll be taking all the action steps and they'll follow along with the community. Now the focus could work about two to three hours on average a day. They'll also be executing all the ASM training and taking all the action steps, but they'll actually be active in the community, not just following along, but participating in conversations and discussions, trying to learn more. Now, those that are all in and who are able to do this, they'll be working practically full time on this business. Of course, executing all the training, taking all the action steps, being active in the community, and they're going to go above and beyond and do whatever it takes to make this business a success. Now, how much time you have to invest is completely up to you. There is no right or wrong answer. It's partially dependent upon your goal and how quickly you want to succeed and also upon what you have to offer. So right now, let's make a commitment. Make a commitment to how much time you will put into your business. Just commit to this for the next 12 weeks. If it's possible, pick a specific time each day to work on your business. I know it's not always easy, but try to do that. And then do this. Write down how much time you'll put into your business each and every day. And then set a calendar for yourself and post it somewhere where you can easily see it. Now, this is a pretty long lesson, so let's recap everything we did. First thing is you determine your business objective whether it's cash flow, cash out, or a combination of the two. You also determine what your own personal goals were, which led you to determine your financial goals for your business. Then you committed to how much money you will invest, and then you committed to how much time you will also invest in your business. And all these things reinforce your own commitment to being a success in this business. Now, be sure to keep everything that you wrote down and committed to somewhere handy so in the future you can always look back and refer to it. And I'll see you in the next lesson.